So hey everybody, what's going on? Yeah, you know, it's uh, that time of year again where Samsung's about to drop a brand new Galaxy S24 lineup of phones. And of course, we're going to have the S24 Ultra, the Plus, and then just the standard S24, which in my opinion though, folks, like it's so funny because I can remember whenever the S23 was, was, was launched, everybody was calling the flagship phone the, the Ultra. And don't get me wrong, yes, it was the most expensive the most feature packed phone but whenever you buy an s20 line phone like s23 now that s24 they're all flagship level phones just the more expensive you buy them you might have some more storage options opened up to you or of course uh, a bigger camera array but as far as the base hardware configuration they're all flagship level so that shouldn't change with this year here and you know uh, this is all coming from The Verge and a person by the name of uh, Evan Blass on uh, Twitter by the name of at EV Leaks. And he just straight up posted an entire chart here for what this entire lineup is going to have. And we're going to just take a look at this here together here, okay, folks? Um, now, the S24 Ultra is, of course, the most expensive phone. You can call it the flagship of the flagship lineup here, you know? Uh, high resolution camera, 200 megapixel up to 8K video. But the thing here is, though, folks, that I can remember back whenever I had my S23 Ultra, the 200 megapixel shooter was just a mode. It itself wasn't all the time 200 megapixels. Matter of fact, what it would do is that it would take those 200 megapixels and bend them down to a much smaller size. So I truly do wonder if the S24 Ultra is going to just have a straight up 200 megapixel sensor that's going to be firing 200 megapixel shots at all times. Because if you can get 200 megapixel shots with like an HEVC codec or something like that with this thing here, you can get extremely detailed, extremely high resolution photos that don't take up a lot of space at all on your phone's internal storage. So that's kind of cool. And naturally, the S24 Ultra is going to have a 100 times space zoom, 2x, 3x, 5x, 10x quad telephoto zoom, which is insane. Uh, S24 Plus space zoom, 30x, going to be 2x, 3x for the uh, dual telephoto. And then for the S24, 30x space zoom. And then again, just like the S24 Plus, 2x and 3x for just a regular telephoto, which in my opinion still is some pretty good reach. And of course, it's going to have a huge 6.8 inch AMOLED screen like the S23 Ultra. Uh, it was probably by far the best screen on a phone I have ever had the pleasure of owning and using. So I can only imagine that the S24 Ultra here, just the entire S24 line uh, is going to just be a newer iteration of that technology. And it's going to be even better. And then for the S24 Plus, it's going to be 6.7 inches. And for the S24, 6.2, which again are still pretty darn massive, if you ask me. And like with Apple making the move to titanium for their brand new iPhone 15 line, it looks like for the S24 Ultra, it looks like Samsung's going to be doing the exact same as well with IP68 water resistance too. Now for the S24 Ultra, there have been some other leaks outside of what you're seeing here that actually do show a terabyte option for it. But this chart right here only shows 256 and 512 gig storage and 12 gigs of memory. Now, like the Ultra, the S24 Plus is also going to have 12 gigs of RAM and either 256 or 512 gigs for storage. And for the S24, it looks like you're going to have a lower base spec here with only 8 gigs of RAM available with either 128 gigs or 256 gigs for storage. But in my opinion, though, with everything that you have uploaded to the cloud, that 256 should be more than enough for anybody. I actually wouldn't recommend you pick the lower spec 128 gig. Um, mainly because, you know, with as many photos as people are, are taking and they do get uploaded to the cloud for certain services, like on, on my iPhone 14 Pro Max here, I have, um, I'm subscribed to uh, Amazon Photos. So any photo I happen to take on this thing is immediately uploaded to my Amazon account, which, which saves a ton of space on this phone. It really does. So, but there are a lot of people out there that might not know how to set that up or don't subscribe to Amazon Prime to have that type of service available to them. So uh, if you take a lot of video, a lot of photos, and even the base model S24 can shoot up to 8K video, that 128 gig uh, base limit there, it's gonna fill up extremely quick. And here's the thing too, everybody, okay? Um, I know this isn't necessarily the most in-depth leak style video that you're going to ever see, but that's okay. You know, I, I I just like talking about this stuff with you guys and gals, and, and I love to hear what you all got to say about it, you know? Um, the thing is here too, folks, is that everybody is talking about Beeper Mini right now and how they are in a constant fight with Apple. 
because they keep blocking the service that Beeper is building. So I, you know, so Android users can use uh, iMessage on their Android devices. And here's the thing, okay, y'all, here is the thing. Whenever I was an Android user, like my very first iPhone was the iPhone uh, 10R or XR, whatever you want to call it. And I had no idea, like I knew what iMessage was, but I didn't understand why it was such a big deal until I got an iPhone. You know what I mean? Uh, I just thought, yeah, texting is texting. It's not, you know, it's whatever, right? Oh, it's a picture, whatever, you know? But now that I've, I've had an iPhone for a few years now, I, I, I get it. And I also understand why a lot of Android users want that same type of functionality in their messaging. Now, you know, um, Google with their RCS initiative and everything, they have a universal profile for nearly every single phone out there for every single carrier out there. And RCS pretty much right now on Android is the status quo for, you know, encrypted messaging, being able to send a much higher resolution photo and video to your Android friends and family. And uh, just, you know, all around, like, you know, uh, parody, if you want to call it that, to iMessage for whatever comes to features, like you can do reactions, you have red receipts, you have end-to-end uh, -end encryption, you also have, you know, the little typing indicators and stuff like that as well, too, for uh, messaging apps that support RCS on Android. So, like, um, as far as, you know, feature parity, it's pretty much on par now, in my opinion, with iOS and iMessage. But as we all know, it's that lack of interoperability that everybody seems to really want to take a hold of and use it, you know, because unfortunately, as of right now, whenever I send a photo uh, to my Android friends or they send me one, it is a huge step down in quality. But sometimes we just get around that by sending each other snaps or photos on, you know, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, whatever it might be. And since that all uses data and whatnot, it's able to, you know, be sent in a much higher resolution than what you can via SMS, which is, of course, what Apple falls back to whenever you are messaging an Android user. But Apple did go on record and say that they are going to implement RCS functionality into iMessage sometime in 2024. So that means that theoretically you'll have all the same benefits as texting somebody on Android to Android. You know, the red re receipts, the reactions to messages, higher resolution photos and videos. The only thing that's still kind of a toss up right now is how they're going to handle the end to end encryption. But I guess we'll just see how that kind of plays out. And, you know, everybody is so mad at Apple right now because of it and how they're like, oh, they just want everybody to go out and buy an iPhone instead of us using Beeper and Beeper Mini to send iMessages. And it's like, well, well, yeah, like what what hardware company out there wouldn't want you to buy their hardware? Like, do you think Samsung would be releasing another new Galaxy phone if they didn't want you to upgrade and buy a new phone? No, like Samsung releases a new phone essentially every single year to continue making money to be the multi-billion dollar corporation that, that they are. And also to give people some sort of incentive to say, oh, well, I just got this S23 last year, but this S24 though, it looks pretty good. I think I'm going to upgrade. Even though they're not even done paying off the S23 in the first place. They keep that money cycle going and that's just the way they do it. So just like Samsung wants everybody to buy their brand new S24, S24 Plus and S24 Ultra, why wouldn't Apple want people to buy their iDevices to use iMessage? You know, the way I can think of it is this way here. Whenever I was a kid growing up, cable was all analog. There were no real cable boxes. You just hooked up the coax cable to the back of your TV and the TV remote is what you use to actually, you know, browse your channels and whatnot. Like there were no fancy on-screen menus and all that jazz, right? You just turn the TV on and boom, your channels were all there, you know? Well, back then, a lot of people, what they would do is they would actually split that cable off, you know, split it and run cable to other people's houses for free because you were able to split an analog signal back then. So this is true. One of my neighbors was stealing our cable at one point. We, we didn't even know about it until uh, my dad found a splitter that he didn't remember putting in. And sure enough, it was our neighbor that did it. That, <laughs> that was so funny. Like, 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 like it's funny looking back on it now, but back then it was so messed up. It was, he was so mad. You know, it's like, hey, uh, I'm paying for a service that you're not paying for, but you still have access to it. That's not right because you're piggybacking off of our payments, you know. And then the cable company found out and they had to put in a whole new line and it was it was a big to do, you know. But 
The fact of the matter is, though, is that the cable company didn't want somebody accessing their services that they weren't paying for, for obvious reasons. Why? Because that is what we call theft. That is what we call stealing. If you are using something that does not belong to you, that you're not paying for, that you should be paying for, it's either pirated or you stole it, which is the same thing, technically speaking, but for the sake of the argument here, you know what I mean. And you know, Beeper was able to do all of this with iMessage because somebody actually reversed engineered how iMessage worked. And from what I know, reverse engineering is perfectly legal if it's on the grounds of interoperability, you know what I mean? Uh, but just to reverse engineer something to sell it as your own, that's the illegal part. But for what Beeper was doing, it was perfectly legal. But it's a gray area in my opinion because Beeper is offering a service to something they didn't create, which is iMessage and Apple servers and, and all that stuff. They're giving access to a service they didn't come up with you know what i mean so of course legally it, it's it's not stealing but if if i was apple and if i had all these unauthorized users all of a sudden on our servers that are using our services that they didn't pay for aka didn't get an i device for then yeah i'm gonna say hey bro whoa that's not cool pull it back a little bit you know, uh, this uh, this isn't going to work. I know that in other parts of, of the world, this is like a non-controversy because even people that have iPhones overseas, nine times out of 10, they use WhatsApp because it's, it's just over in the UK, from what I know, and overseas a lot, um, apparently back whenever texting was a big thing, texting with sms was extremely expensive back in the day overseas but then whatsapp came out saying hey you can send messages with us because it uses data and that's either cheaper than than sms or a lot of the times completely 100 percent free so a lot of overseas countries adopted whatsapp as their main source of messaging as a matter of fact a lot of phones overseas come preloaded with whatsapp as the default messaging app, you know what I mean? Like, even if they have an iPhone, they don't even use iMessage because again, everybody uses WhatsApp. I'm gonna wrap this up though, cause I've been kind of rambling here and I do apologize. But as far as the S24 lineup goes, what do y'all think? If you think it's impressive, you're gonna buy one, you're gonna trade up, what do y'all think? Do me a favor, sign off down below. I would love to hear your opinion. And about this whole, whole beeper, what's your stance on this? Do you think Apple should lighten up and let beeper use their services? Or do you think Apple is fully within their legal right to say, hey, y'all can go throw rocks for all that we care. We're not going to give you access to our services that you clearly are not actually paying for. Do me a favor, sign up in the comments below and I will catch you guys and gals next time.